so we've got a system here where the pressure control is out of adjustment and it was freezing product last night and then now it's not working at all and what's happening is the coil is all frozen over so we're gonna get it defrosted real quick and then we'll go through adjusting this pressure control and getting it set right so while I'm waiting for this unit to defrost I want to point out that this is in fact a newer unit probably only eight years old it's got a new coil in it but it does not have any temperature controller on it it's literally controlled temperature just by a pressure control so we've got a coil a condensing unit a pressure control and that's it what I did right now just so that I could turn the fans back on was I disconnected one leg from the pressure control and taped it off but you see there's no solenoid valves no anything so we're just simply going to start with my cut in temperature on the pressure control and then work our way back from that and we'll get into it in a minute so it didn't take too long I went ahead and got this guy to uh, defrost itself I just let the fan do it maybe eight ten minutes something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together I just opened it up to verify there was nothing on the coil there's not as you can see this is a brand new coil so we just need to make some adjustments to it. So I've started the system up. I started with my cut-in pressure, which is gonna be in the 80s. I took my pressure chart and I found 39 degrees. That's what temperature I want this system to turn back on at, is 39 degrees. So then I set my cut-in on my pressure control at 39. And I will adjust the differential or the cut-out as I see fit while watching the box run. Okay, the box is running right now. It's 58 degrees in the box. And we're just watching everything operate. So the unit's running. It's coming down in temperature. You can see my box temp is at 41 degrees right now. Let's return air temp. We're running approximately a 20 degree evaporator TV. That's the temperature difference between return air temp and the vapor saturation temperature. It's approximately 20. And we're just waiting for the box to satisfy. So, you know, this is not a race. We're gonna watch this thing cycle on and off two to three times because we're gonna get the perfect setting on it. I'm guesstimating that our cut in is gonna be about 85 and our cut out is gonna be about 45, but we're just waiting to see. I want to point something out on these little regions. It's very hard to use superheat because of a couple different things. But the one biggest thing is, is they're running the suction line and the liquid line in the same set of insulation. So superheat is going to be a difficult number to diagnose off of. Um, you can evaporate or superheat. There's really nowhere to grab because they don't give you any space. So a lot of times in reach-in refrigerators, you're, it's, you're lucky if you can actually measure superheat in a good place. So, but even still, I'm clamped on right there. Now granted, that's running with the liquid line, so that's absorbing heat from the liquid line all the way from, you know, through that line set right there. But I'm still doing pretty good for compressor superheat. I'm at 33 degrees. So, we're looking good right now. We're running a 20 degree TD. We're just watching the box come down to temperature. It's at 37 degree box temp right now. Everything's looking good. My liquid saturation temperature is approximately 30 degrees above my ambient. So, you know, we're looking good so far, just trucking along, just waiting for it to come down to temp. It's just a, a waiting process. So we just cycled off 35 degrees, 34 degrees right in there. Pressure's at 66. And we're just gonna watch it turn back on and see where it turns on and off at and monitor the temperatures. Okay, with some tweaking, I got this thing set where I wanted it to just some fine tuning adjustments. So I use those initial numbers like 85 and I think I said 40 something just to get me in the ballpark and then I tweak the numbers here and there to get it dialed in. So on my thermometer right here, my max temp is 40.3, my minimum temp is 34. So I bring my box temp down to 34, but then back up to 40. That's perfect, that's the perfect setup. That's the most, uh, most split that I want to put between there because I go any colder and I'm going to start risk uh, freezing their products because that air blowing off the coils a lot colder than 34 so we don't want to freeze their lettuce or anything 
So yeah, that's where we're at. And I'll explain a little bit more in the recap. Okay, so let's do a little recap here. We had a service call on a Delfield refrigerator that wasn't working properly. Okay, this one is a little peculiar um, because they're actually using a low pressure control as a temperature controller for this unit. There is no solenoid valves and there is no electrical mechanical or digital temperature controllers whatsoever. So they're simply monitoring the box uh, low side pressure and they're using that to cycle on temperature. Okay, I recently did a podcast with Brian Orr on HVAC School um, talking about uh, reach-in refrigerators, temperature controllers, and we kind of covered this a little bit. I also wrote a tech tip on his uh, website also about this same topic, and that's of using a low pressure control as a temperature controller. Okay, it's not a very common thing anymore, but I do occasionally run into it. So this one's pressure control was actually out of adjustment. So the pressure control was making the box get too cold and it caused the evaporator coil to freeze up. I defrosted the evaporator coil and then I went to go about uh, adjusting the pressure control to the right temperatures and pressures, okay? The way that we did that was we started with our cut-in temperature, okay? I knew that I wanted this box to turn the compressor back on when it got to around 40 degrees, okay? So I found a temperature pressure chart I looked for 40 degrees Fahrenheit and I read uh, the refrigerant pre uh, refrigerant type and I read down the line and found what pressure that refrigerant would be at 40 degrees and that was my start point, okay? Once I did that, I let the box cycle and then once the box got down to temperature where I wanted it, which was about 34 degrees, I noted what pressure it was and I adjusted the pressure control accordingly for the cut out pressure. Okay, then it took a little tweaking to fine tune it in between there, but it is important to know that we do still run into these kind of systems. Um, it's kind of antiquated, but it actually is very effective, just like a constant cut in control, because it's pretty much, um, well, it's doing a pretty good job, not as good as a constant cut in control, but it'll help to make sure that there's no ice buildup on that coil. Now, a constant cut in temperature controller would work better because it's actually embedded in the coil and it's sensing the physical coil temp versus the actual pressure in the system. So theoretically, we could still have some ice on the coil and our pressures would be uh, enough to turn the system back on, okay? But that's pretty much it. It wasn't too difficult, but I know this can be very confusing for people, okay? Hey, I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate the feedback you've been giving me. Um, you know, leave me some more notes. Let me know what you think. Let me know your questions, video topic ideas. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm really looking for new service technicians right now. Uh, I'm willing to train or I'm willing to hire someone with experience. So if you're interested in working on the kind of equipment that I do, hey, send me an email, uh, hvacrvideos at gmail.com or uh, that's also down in the show notes of the video, and I'd love to look over your resume, okay? Thanks a lot, and we'll see you guys on the next one.